never told a customer before. Personally, I never made a bet in my life. You know why? Because I've observed firsthand what we've seen the different kinds of people that are addicted to gambling. What we would call degenerates. I've noticed there's one thing that makes all of them the same. You know what that is? Yes. They're all looking to lose. I am an ex-casino gambling degenerate. At the peak of my high, you could have came into the casino and stuck a gun to my head. I'd say, pull the trigger. I'm not leaving. I blew 20000 in the nugget. I took the limo from the nugget over to Caesars, dropped another twenty. dollars I was limiting myself to twenty grand. Once I hit twenty, I figured it's time to go try another joint. Blow another twenty. I'm stuck like $60,000. i am down to about 1800 And then I start winning every hand. I I'm getting sevens, and I'm splitting them. The dealer's got a six, and I'm getting a four and a three. I'm doubling down. I'm betting stacks. I cleaned out both cylinders of black. Now I'm working on the purples. I tell the dealer, color me up, baby. I'm out of here. So I'm looking at the chips, and I'm thinking to myself, what would happen if I caught that shoe again? I mean, I have like 90-something thousand here. Told the dealer to shuffle. I would say two-thirds into the shoe, I made my last $500 bet. Instead of being sick over the loss, I'm already making plans of going down the next day and taking more money out of my safe deposit box to win back my losses because I figure if I can get that one shoe that I had before and I can get five hundred to ten thousand dollars a hand which I'm gonna to have to bring down hundred and fifty thousand maybe to do this I could walk out of there with a quarter of a million I lost within six months over a million dollars in cash and whatever money I could borrow steal rob and then I went into their credit system where you can borrow money from the casino in the form of markers. You know, if you take money out of the casino, they don't charge you interest. So why wouldn't I take it from them? But unfortunately, once you start taking out the credit, you're doomed. It's over. My wife had no idea. She wasn't ignorant. She wasn't stupid. She trusted me. The sheriff came to the door, with a, you know, handed her a writ. We have to write down what's in the home. We have to write down all the things because there's going to be a sheriff's sale because I was being sued by the casinos. She was just a basket case by now. The following week, I was in the casino gambling, and she walked in. And she says, you got to come home. you got to get out of here. You have to come right now. The pit boys came over and I said, look, you got two things. Either I leave or you get her out of here. He says, that's your wife? I said, she could be a hooker. I don't know. Get her out of here. <laughs> it's okay. I understand. No, Glenn, you don't understand. Well, I've been reading up about this. First thing you gotta do is admit it to yourself. You got things wrong. If you just say it. I don't have a gambling problem. Do you think I'm an idiot? I know I've not been here for you lately, but things are different now. All right, you gotta trust me, please. I have a financial problem. Lady, look at me. In just a moment, one of them will succumb to an illness worse than any virus can produce, known as the fever. Why don't you just take handfuls of nickels and throw them out into the street? They can possibly put it back in the machine. You have unlimited credit. You spent a great deal of money. Don't you think you ought to stop now? I hate a woman who stands in back of you and sees to it that you're, you have miserable luck. That's the third time you've cast a check. Shut your mouth! No good can come from money one like this. I'm going back in there and feed it back into the machine. Mr. Franklin Gibbs, visitor to Las Vegas, who lost his money, his reason, and finally his life. That's my last dollar! government now is as addicted to gambling as I was. All the lobbyists for gaming tell you, this is a form of entertainment. No different than going to the ball game. No different than going to the theater, to the movies. People who are in the casinos are spending their disposable income. In the city of Detroit, they say one out of seven homes may go into foreclosure this year. And people say, well, it's Detroit. Of course, the auto industry went south. The auto industry went south. How about the three casinos that are in the city of Detroit that are doing over a billion dollars a year in revenue? Where's that money coming from? You know, in my state here in Pennsylvania, the government's collecting 55% of every dollar gamble. If you compare it to drugs, it would be legalizing drugs in this country for the tax revenue. Gambling is a vicious evil. It corrupts our youth and blights the lives of our adults. 
It becomes a springboard for other crimes, embezzlement, robbery, and even murder. But like any other type of crime, it can be controlled. No criminal, the gambler and his allies included, can long stand up before a determined, intelligent, and informed public opinion. That, in my opinion, is the basic answer to the gambling problem. The industry comes into your state, believe me, it's no different than if the Vatican was coming here. They become a country within a country. They make the rules. The government knows if they do anything to affect the revenue of the casino operator, it's going to affect their coffers. We'll make them wear seatbelts when they're in their car. We'll make them be able not, after so many drinks they can't drive. We'll make them not be able to carry guns around the street without a permit. There is not one provision, not one safeguard to protect anyone from becoming a compulsive gambler. In Pennsylvania, you have to have a license to fish in the creeks. So I said, how about we make it a license? And before someone gets this license to gamble in a casino, let's see if they're in bankruptcy, foreclosure, not paying child support. To me, I don't think someone like that should be gambling. Let's not have them cashing checks. Let's not have them giving out credit with no interest. And no one who investigates this industry goes to these casinos during the week at 2 in the morning, 3 or 4. You want to see pathological gambling in full bloom. It's like walking into an opium den. These people are the sick of the sickest. I've been there. When Atlantic City opened up for almost six years, they were only open till four in the morning and on holidays till six, and they reopened at 10. So they took a break in between to get them out, let them get some air, go home, think it over, and maybe they won't come back. Then when other states got gaming, Atlantic City said, we got to go 24 seven to compete. So what's the state going to complain? Sure, do whatever you want. They never get denied anything. Even today, they're smoking in most of our casinos. The New Jersey's a smoke-free state, but the casinos say, hey, you're New Jersey, you're a state. We're like the Vatican again. We have our own laws. Every state that has gaming has what's called a casino control board, gaming board, to govern the everyday operations of the casinos. This does not have to go through legislation. Our control board, the gaming board in Pennsylvania, can make this happen over no, they're the ones that are supposed to make these operators operate without destroying lives. And they're doing What can I do with five dollars? Buy a bullet and rent a gun? <laughs> Let's see how you do against three hands. Sure you don't want to save a few bucks for the buffet? Whoa, I am on fire! Why don't you give me half the money you were going to bet? Then we'll go out back, I'll kick you in the nuts, and we'll call it a day!